Welcome back to the Mid-Year Mitch YouTube channel. Today's episode, we're back on the 67 Corvette Overkill, and this time we're removing the quarter panels. I'm gonna show you some more in-depth tips and tricks on how to remove them, and then we're also gonna install a brand new pair of Vetmasters quarter panels. So be sure to stick around. It's finally time to put quarter panels on Overkill. I've been avoiding this for quite a while because I really don't wanna mess up the patina, but it's time to swap it out. So if you didn't see in previous videos, these quarter panels are radiused. They're also cracked um, and these radius quarters were set up so you could run a wider wheel, but we have a different chassis on the car now and the wheels are tucked in. So we don't need this. Uh, and it makes the wheel well just look so much bigger. So we're gonna put a stock quarter panel on that has the original width and the original wheel opening. So to remove these, first I need to expose the bonding seam right through here. And then it wraps down through the taillight panel. And underneath the bonding seam is a bonding strip. So you have your quarter panel, your rear deck, there's a seam of glue here. And underneath the two is a bonding strip that, that comes right through here. So what we need to do is remove the glue till we start to touch the bonding strip. And then we're gonna come in here with our air hammer or we're gonna come in here with uh, our heat gun, heat up the quarter panel. And what I like to do with the air hammer is first start it in this way till you dig a little hole and then you tip it up and then you kind of blast into the quarter panel. So the quarter panels glue across the front here in the latch pillar. There's a seam here for the floor. There's a splash shield that comes through here and then it wraps around the back. So there's a lot of places they glue. The front can be a little tricky. The quarters fit the car nice. So kind of before you get started, you wanna make sure your door is in a pretty solid spot because you wanna put your quarter in the same spot. I wanna make sure the car is level, which I believe the body sits on here really nice. I'll do some measurements from the chassis to the ground, the rocker to the ground, to make sure the chassis is level. If you're concerned about your bumper fit, you can put a bumper on to make sure it fits well before you start. And so that way, whenever you put your new quarter on, you make sure your bumper still fits. Uh, and then if you know your chassis and everything is square, when you put your new quarter panels on, you should have the same measurement from the wheel lip to the ground on both sides. So that way you're sure that everything is square and you're not gonna have something funky going on because it's a lot easier to fix it right now. I removed the paint to expose the bonding seam with 80 grit and then I came through here and ground out the bonding adhesive seam with a cutoff wheel here. So I like to use a cutoff wheel rather than a sander because I can get a fairly sharp edge in here. Whenever you come through with your hammer and chisel or if your air hammer, whatever tool you wanna use, you wanna have a nice sharp edge. So that way, whenever the chisel goes in there, it'll just split that seam rather than just dance around in there. So now I have my tip on my chisel sharpened. What I like to do is give it a couple blasts kind of at this angle. And then once I start to dig a little bit of a trench, then I tip it up. If you start blasting at this angle, most likely you're just gonna ricochet off. So I have the passenger side quarter panel removed and I also ground out some of the extra glue that was here and it came off pretty good. It didn't come off in one piece. It looked like there were actually a bunch of rivets in here whenever they did their flare work. So that kind of screwed up peeling the thing off in one piece. But overall, everything turned out nice. The splash shield still attached and this bonding strip is also in one piece. So it all looks good. I mocked up the quarter panel now and it's not exactly where it needs to live. Uh, it still needs to be trimmed up close to the door jam and shortened a little bit. But overall, you can see with the body line, with the door, that's about where it needs to live. And look at the gap between the tire and the quarter panel. So if we take a measurement here, it's just under 26 inches. So let me come over to the other side and we'll take a look at how big this gap is here. And we'll put our tape up there. And this is radius, so we're not going to get a perfect measurement. But it's like 28 and a quarter. So that's a pretty significant difference. I mean, you can fit your whole hand in here 
versus a tuck in the top of the tire. And you can also see when you look across this way, hopefully you can, you can see that there's a couple inches between the tire and the edge of the quarter. Where here, it'll be a little harder to see, but there's probably about an inch or a fingertip actually, it's probably not even an inch. It's probably half an inch or so between the tire and the quarter panel. So naturally this will make the car look like the wheels actually fit it, but it'll also improve the stance. So I position the quarter panels on the car. You really care about getting the back to line up the best that you can. You wanna make sure that it curves this way. This one needs to come forward just a little bit more. And then I made some marks so I know how high the quarter panel is with this body line compared to the door because the quarter is too long to open the door. So you have to take the quarter back off, open the door. And then I came in here with just this little piece of wire that I bent into like a little square. And I came in here and I scribed a line on the inside of the quarter. And I did it on this passenger side. You can see, I don't know if you can see it very well. Yeah, you can see it. It looks like a little pencil mark, basically. So if you didn't know, you can sign your check at a restaurant if you're getting bad service and you, your pen doesn't work. You can sign it with a fork. Same kind of principle here. You can use a piece of wire and just scribe your line. So now I'm gonna cut this. So I have the quarter panels almost fitting on the car. I've been slowly whittling away at the bonding strips under here and removing glue just to get these to fit how I want. And you can see with a little bit of pressure, this will have a nice gap, but it's a little bit low in this area. So I'm gonna add some fiberglass filler from probably about here to here and to bring that up a little bit so that way it's not lower than the door. And then the transition on the top is what I'm focusing on making sure this panel is not higher than this one. Uh, so I, if it is, I just need to remove some more glue. And then I'll show you when I get these quarter panels up on a sawhorse, but they have a little ridge under here. So here's the underside of the quarter panel. I don't think I showed you this in my last video, but there's this little raised area that runs through here, which outlines where the splash shield should go. And then there's the same kind of shape right here, which shows where the floor section bonds up to it. So I guess they did that on new old stock or original GM panels, probably to tell the guys where they had to grind or where they had to put their glue. I assume it was some kind of mark like that. But uh, I also wanted to show you this slip here, which is what I was talking about. I'm pretty sure this is either just a little bit of flashing from the mold or the purpose of it is to space the quarter panel off of the bonding strip so you have a little bit of, to make sure you have a minimum glue thickness. Um, but if you're having trouble getting your quarter panel to fit, this thickness may vary. Like it's a little bit taller back here than it is towards the front. And my quarter is standing a little higher than the, the rear deck right there. So I'm gonna come through here and scuff this whole area and that should help the quarter fit a little better. But I, I like to rough everything up with 36 grit. So I'm gonna clean up all the bonding areas because we're getting close to getting these quarter panels glued on the car. So I have the quarter panels on for the final test fit. When I do the final test fit, I like to test my clamp arrangements to figure out how I can get the quarter exactly where I want it and to make sure before there's glue on it that I can get clamps everywhere I need to get clamps so that way the panel glues on properly. So that's gonna work well. I already test fit my clamps at the back. And now I'm gonna cover 
a lot of mating surfaces and foil tape. So I'm going to cover up the exhaust valance as well as the leading edge of the door because I don't want glue to ooze out and I don't want to glue those panels to the car. So I glued the quarter panels on and they've been sitting all weekend. So these things are nice and cured up and it looks like the gaps turned out really nice. Doesn't look like they moved at all. So now I'm gonna take this fixture out, pull all the clamps off, all the tape. I removed all the clamps and the fixture and all the tape. And I tell you what, this thing turned out Pretty much perfect. I didn't sand anything yet, but the door gap is like perfect between the quarter and the door. It looks nice at the bottom. The body line lines up good. There's just a little bit of flashing in, in the door jam that just needs to be sanded just to get a nice even gap. But it looks perfect. They're both the same height from the wheel lip to the floor, so I know the quarters are square. They're at like 26 and three quarters. And just look at how much better this looks compared to when we started. So before, the wheel well was like somewhere up here. And now it's just barely tucking the top of the tire. And once this car has some more tire on it and some more weight in the back, it'll tuck even better. So that looks, that looks so much better, even though I love the patina, but that's just, that just looks so much cooler. And then around the back, this turned out nice. This will all blend together well. I have to remove a little bit of the glue between the valance and the quarter, but that turned out nice. We had to use a little bit of tape in here to help suck the quarter in at the bottom. But that turned out nice. All the gaps look good. This is all very workable. This will all blend together really nice. The gap across here is nice. And then again, this door gap is basically perfect. Body line lines up nice. It just flows with the door really well. So this uh, is a really nice coupe compared to some of the factory ones, the way the doors fit across the top through the side. Uh, if you're doing a car like this where you're putting one together, if you get the door to line up with the roof, then you can make the quarter line up with the door. Uh, and then you can do the same to the front end. So I'm really happy with the way this looks. It's Kind of crazy to see it without all the patina on it, but it's on its way to getting a new paint job. So this will be pretty much it for overkill for quite a while. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We did a lot of work on overkill. This is the last time we're gonna see this old girl for a long time. And now it's time to jump into some more projects. So I got a lot of work to do and I'll catch you guys later.